Welcome back, my eagle friends. We are currently in the case of mine me not being able to remember and speak properly. Anyway, so we, we have only whoops, <laughs> don't mind me. We only have one more place to visit, and it's the Richview Mall. Ah, yes, the ripoff rock. That took a while for me to think about that. I think this will be my last video for today, but okay. Here's a display of stuff from space. The sign says the exhibit is going all over the country to help teach Americans about science, and it's only in Richview for two weeks. I wonder if there are any rocks in it. Alright. Oh, look, there's people walking past, but no one is shopping in the main thoroughfare. Actually, when I look at this, this really, like the, the step down into the water and the long path kind of really reminds me of Dead Rising. Mmm. Thinking about zombies during a children's game. Delicious. Alright, let's speak to this person. Hello, children. My name is Mrs. Camille, and I am a curator from of the objects from Space Expert. All these things have come from out space, and I'm out of my mind. <laughs> We're interested in rocks, or things that might be called rocks. Are there any in the exhi exhibit? Why, yes. We are fortunate to have an actual rock brought back from the moon by an Apollo astronaut. Very rare and special indeed. Yes, very special. What kind of rock is it? It's called a... Oh, damn it! <laughs> it's called a... Anothorocyte. It is light in colour because it's rich in mineral calcium. This is the this is the rock that covers most of the moon's surface, and it makes the moon shine so brightly when it's full. It looks pretty plain. Is it valuable? Oh yes, quite. You cannot just go to the moon and get another. Many collectors would pay a lot of money to own an actual rock from the moon. Gosh, lady, you don't have a cow. Anyway, I think it's time for us to solve this case. Actually, I'm going to go back just to make sure that we didn't miss anything. No, we went there, and we went there, and we went there, and we went there, and we went there. We'll go back here just to solve our case. Hurry up, Jennifer. Oh, good. You're still here. All right, let's solve. We're ready to solve the <laughs> solve the rock ripoff. Pick the five clues that best show that you s who you suspect is guilty of stealing a real rock and putting a false one in its place. Alright. Mm, okay, I... All I know which rock we are. Alright, mysterious call. I've got the rock. No one knows I put a fake rock on display. It's the perfect crime. Alright, we're gonna go blah blah blah. And no, no, with none of these. Uh, oh, uh, one bird sculpture is of a rock. That one's relevant, and he would know. Because he did it. <laughs> um, the woman who signs puts a signature on each one. Uh, not that one. On these two. Now point out who you, you suspect of being the rock robber. I think it's Mr. Griffith. Gridden. Griffin? Griffin? Griffin. Yes, Mr. Griffin is trying to sell a fake rock sculpture, and you can prove it! Let's check the evidence. Our scanner picked up someone's phone call. He or she said that a valuable rock had been taken, and a fake one had been put in its place, and no one had noticed the change. We thought the person had said rock, but rock sounds the same as rock, <laughs> which is the name of a giant bird in an old legend. Could the thief have stolen the sculpture of the big bird? Artists often put their signature on their work. This tells everyone that they created the art. On the other sculptures, the signatures were all smooth and said Julie Eric's daughter, the name of a woman who lives in Iceland. But on the sculpture of the rock, the signature was not so smooth but scratchy. Also, it was spelled di differently. Julie Eric's daughter. It had been done by another person. This rock was a fake. Mr. Griffith was responsible for the sculptures. He told us that he would know if anyone had replaced the real rock with a fake one. He knew all right, because he was the one who did it. 
didn't I just say that like less than a minute ago? Anyway. Ah, oh, Nancy. Will you ever have your glasses in their correct position? Great investigation. Rizalka exposed an art forger no one even suspected, because no one wanted to buy it, and made the front page of the courier too. And who puts, you know, does an exhibit, an exhibit of a, uh, you know, wood sculptures on the beach, in a place that they think they're going to sell it, in an empty beach. Anyway, Rizalka's making Eagle Eyes famous. Check out that article. Oh, hog calling, so, so sweet. I just love the extra stories. Anyway, art fraud, foiled by clever detectives. A criminal art dealer was arrested today when Rizalka and Jennifer of the Eagle Eye Detective Agency proved that a sculpture of a giant bird was a fake and not a real rock. The detectives compared the signatures found on the rock sculptures with those of other sculptures. When they didn't match, they called the police and the art and the art dealer, Mr. Griffin, was taken into custody and charged with fraud. A telephone call to Julie Eric's daughter, the sculptor in Iceland, confirmed that the real rock sculpture had been sold months ago. Mr. Griffin had been making copies of Mrs. Eric's daughter's sculpture and selling them as though they were hers. The artist praised the detective's worth, in no doubt in, in um, in Icelandish. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot tonight. Anyway. Very clever, she said. I am going to make a sculpture of Sherlock Holmes and send it to the young detectives, uh, to the detectives as a reward. All right, and since I am currently going out of my mind by misreading and miss, really misreading, I am going to call this an end of a video for now. Thanks for watching. Zilker out.